So anyway, uh, the Virgin. So he's he's uh, he's he's in the irony here is he's playing Brian Pillman, <laughs> who was not a Virgin, <laughs> and uh, he's he's trying to Probably. trying to break into the NXT tapings and tries to show up to SmackDown but get kicked out. Talking it, trash about HBK. Yeah. Saying Brett would have booked better. Brett would have been a better booker. Uh-huh. And people are going to go, what's with the inside? A booker is not an indication that it's fake. There, UFC has a booker. Yes. Which means a person who books matches. Yes. And uh, he's not getting booked. Mm-hmm. So he thinks that Brett would be a better booker. Maybe he's he would. Gonna sh- he's going to show I up. I mean, he's going to book you, Virgin. Show up in TNA. Watch. He could. He actually yeah. could show up in TNA. I like that idea. Look, I, if, if this is going to be a thing, and it might as well be a thing, why not give a guy like Brooks Jensen, who's not going to get time on NXT and certainly is not at the level to be brought up to the main roster, you can say that about Fallon Henley and, and Josh Briggs. They should probably stay down longer, but they're a lot more ready than this kid is. So use TNA for that. Use it for a couple of people like that who need some experience, need some shine, and they need it away from NXT level up or whatever, you know, their basically their D show is. We got Chuck Taylor talking about his injury status. He was interviewed by Renee, says, I can get surgery. Once I heal from that, I can hopefully reassess. A lot of guys and gals have come back from, quote, career-ending injuries, he says. He has not scheduled the surgery yet. He's wanting to take the summer to learn the production side of AEW television. It's not really an emergency, they said. I can't do anything athletic. Eventually, they said I'll get terrible arthritisism. Is that a word? Arthritis. Arthritis. And then all they can do is fuse it. But that's years down the line, so I'm hoping maybe take the summer to feel comfortable in this job. I don't want to learn half of it and then leave for a while. So hopefully after this summer is my hope. So, uh, hey, at least he's working on something else in wrestling the time being yeah. so that's good news and, and we'll that's see. why multiple promotions are important i know people are dogging yeah they don't know what's going on on impact nobody watches or whatever people hate aew whatever these things provide jobs for these guys for a long time look at lou d'angeli for heaven's sakes you know guy who was signed guy dudley and louie dangerously and he was able to take his marketing background and go ahead and exploit that in the wrestling business for a long time. So it's nice to see a lot of these folks, because a lot of your favorites at some point, they're going to be wrapping it up. And look at guys like Adam Pearson and, and folks like that, Abyss. You know, there's a ton of them who have, you know, gotten into this field. And the more jobs that are open, the more chances that, as there are to learn and make money, that's a good thing. And then we got Monday's Raw, 1.679 million viewers and a .53 in 18 to 49, which is interesting because there was no major sports competition. NBA and NHL playoffs waiting to start their finals later on in the week. Viewership down 8.2%, 18-49 down 5.4%. So not a not a great week for Raw, but uh, still 1.7 million viewers. Not too bad, .53. Interesting on a heel-heavy show. It truly is. On a heel heavy, sh- you mean with all the run-ins? Well, no, and also, think, just look, obviously Damian Priest is going to be a big-time baby face at some point. That brand needs it because you have Gunther, you have Drew McIntyre, you know, you have, a, you know, Chad Gable is, is a heavy, and yeah, he's offset somewhat by Sami Zayn, but it is a lot of bad guys who are doing a very good job running that show. But in Liv Morgan, put her into that mix as well, too, and Becky Lynch being gone. So the uh, NXT show is built around Ethan Page. The story was he is not signed. He's a free agent. He showed up at the building. Ava wanted to sign him. So he ends up going into her office. He comes out. He's all cocky. She does not want to give him what he wants in his contract negotiations. So Truth, uh, or Trick, ends up coming up. And he says, uh, I want you to give him this deal. She goes, I can't do it. He says, I don't care. He attacked me. He's running in here. He's trying to, you know, whatever, make a mockery of, of NXT. Harsh's vibe. I want you to give him whatever he wants. She goes, I can't. Like a Kleenex? Maybe to blow their nose? Not blow my nose. I got to sneeze. Ha <laughs> ha! So then, end of the show, he's supposed to come out for the contract signing. And once again, she tells him, I'm not going to sign this deal. I, 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 I can't. And Trick once again comes out. And he goes, you've got to sign this deal. 
I don't care what it says. I've got to I've got to whip this guy's behind. And so uh Ethan oh God dying over here. Ethan reveals that uh if he signs his contract the way it is written right now, if Ava signs it, that means that not only is he going to wrestle on the PLE this weekend, but he's going to be wrestling Trick for the NXT title. And he vows to end the Trick Williams era. And Trick thinks about it for a while. And then he demands that Avis allow him to sign the contract. And so Avis signs. And so that is the main event this weekend. It is Ethan Page against Trick Williams for the NXT title. And if you want to do a little bit of foreshadowing here, after the show in a digital exclusive, Oro Mensa attacked ethan page and we're still going to have ethan page and noam dar to come so i don't think anybody believes page is going to defeat trick williams for that title that would be insane to me but uh they've already got an escape valve there and noam dar against ethan page sounds pretty good so we got uh that match is the main event we've got oba femi against joe coffee and wesley this sean michaels loves gallus yes i talk about this all the time <laughs> It's like, like, like everybody shaking his thing. Everybody has <laughs> not just in wrestling, but like I like Lightning Hopkins. Everybody has something in their life that people are like, "What? That's your favorite?" Like, huh? Well, you like furs? especially with wrestling. I bet if we ask Montezzi, like, what was the first thing you saw in wrestling that got you interested? He'll mention something like Chavo Classic or something. There's always something like that. And Dino, uh, Bravo and the Ultimate Warrior. Shawn Michaels has his Gallus. I'm just watching this show, and sure enough, Gallus comes out and takes out everybody. And I'm like, Gallus. Yeah, I can't say anything. I got a picture of uh, Ronnie Garvin behind me as NWA champion. That's that's a great example. So yes, Oba Femi against Joe Coffey and Wes Lee for the North American title. And honestly, in that match, I think Oba Femi should win. Because yeah. if, if Wesley's winning the title, he should win in a singles match against against Obafemi. We got Roxanne Perez and Jordan Grace for the NXT only for the NXT women's title. And uh, I would not be surprised if Jordan won that title. Hmm. I would not be surprised. But we'll see. So we have the ladder match to crown the first ever NXT women's North American champion. I'll talk about that in a second, because I got I got I got I got to talk about that. NXT Underground: Shayna Baszler, Lola Vice, Nathan Frazier, Axiom vs. OC, and Sexy Red Host. Now, this match. You know how I like uh, I rant all the time about uh, you know Tony Storm and you know the baby faces she has to fit like all this and the baby face and heels and in AEW and this and that. Yeah. Now, some of you idiots think I'm just like whatever, but I'm a fair man. Okay. You yes. This NXT segment. Nothing AEW has done ever has been as confusing and irritating as this segment they did on this show. <laughs> so here are the women in the ladder match. Sol Ruka, Lash Legend, Jada Parker, Fallon Henley, Meechit, and Kalani Jordan. Okay? If you don't watch the show, okay? If you don't watch the show, Sol is a baby face, Meechit is a baby face, and Kalani is a baby face. Okay? Yes. Lash is a heel, Jada is a heel, and Fallon is a heel. Yes. What do you see here? Three and three. Three and three. Yeah. So they announced they're going to do a six person. I'm like, well, this is idiot proof. You put the three baby faces against the three heels. No. They mixed it up. They had baby faces and heels on one team against baby faces and heels on the other team. Okay? Impromptu. So this freaking match gets going and like, because you had baby faces and heels mixed up on the teams, it would break down into like a six person. You had no idea who was on whose team. And like heels made comebacks on baby faces and the crowd's like, huh? And then baby faces would make comebacks on baby faces and they were like, what? They weren't ready for the this in freaking match. Like it's it's actually so preposterous. I almost need to watch it again. Like I just could not believe what I was watching. And you're underselling the fact they had a big sit down with a bunch of going back. Oh, and that was forth horrific with all the dialogue. But it was better than trying to figure out this match, where like a heel runs 
And a heel makes a hot tag to another heel who then starts running wild on a baby face. I'm like, God. Shucky ducky quack quack. God, shucky ducky. Back after a break. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.